Yeah, that was the precursor. Somebody would have to uh, drop like a sack of potatoes, and <laughs> Boston's proven that they were certainly capable of doing that. And then on top of that, uh, David Krejci's got an injury, so uh, that, that's a team that <laughs> really doesn't have a uh, – doesn't have its act together at the moment, and they're giving the Flyers a big time opportunity here. They sure are, but Philadelphia, we got to give them some credit as well. I mean, they had a great stretch here. They're still in the midst of this stretch here. What is impressing you that makes you feel like, you know what, they're here to stay? And even though the percentages still say they probably won't do it, they're just four points back. They've at least made you want to watch the scoreboard. Why has that happened? Yeah, I've, I've said it pretty much every time the, the Flyers have won a game this year. The reason that they do it is because their forwards play well in the defensive zone. That's not the, uh, the the sexy thing to say in 2015 in the age of analytics and shot attempts and Corsi and Fenwick and everything. <laughs> the team's playing good defense. Um, you know, when and when you're you're playing good defense against the best, one of the best offensive teams in the NHL, uh, the Nashville Predators, you hold them to uh, seven shots through the first 40 minutes of the game. You can have a third-string goalie in that who spent the last seven years in Germany and still win the game. I mean, that the, the defense is why they're winning games right now. And it's amazing because back in the beginning portion of the season, we would say that was really costing them games. They were playing very poor on that end. But ultimately, you know, does this team to you now have the look of a team that, yes, in fact, is a playoff team? Is this a team that if, if they got in, do they have the look of a team that can make some noise? Uh, make some noise. I, I don't know, but I, I do think I, I've I've turned on it. I think they will they will make the playoffs now. And there's no statistic for confidence, but I see it in them now. And it it hadn't been there uh, for the first few months. They'd been very streaky. And I, I guess you could make the the case that this could could very well just be another one of those streaks. But uh, the way that they're playing these days, uh, they they've got that fire in their eyes, and they look like a team that. Uh, that, that has the confidence that they can play together for extended periods of time and not just uh, a week here or two weeks and then a week off. Uh, they, they finally look like a team that um, that knows what it's capable of because uh, I think everybody would agree that to this point – uh, they've been an underachieving hockey club. They really have been. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the participants here. we got the trade deadline coming up, obviously. A couple of weeks ago, you would say ah, they would have to be a seller. What now? What? Where is your mindset on that coming up next week? Well, as, as nice as this stretch has looked the past couple of weeks, um, nobody, including Ron Hextall, thinks that this team is going to win a Stanley Cup this season. There's no sense in gearing up uh, for 2015 and, and, and going for it all right here when he's really in the first year of, of a long-term plan. Is, is it going to be a Sam Hinkie-esque uh, long-term plan? I don't think so. But uh, he, he's not willing to you know, t- tear up the sheets of paper that he's been uh, making notes on these, these past whatever it's been, almost a year since he's been hired as, as or promoted as general manager. Uh, he, he's not willing to, to tear all that up and, and go for it. So will they be, be hard on sellers? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think uh, there's a whole lot of attractive pieces here that other teams are really banging the door down to, to try and acquire. And even if they did at this point in the standings, Ron Hextall might have to say yes to it just because he doesn't have uh, the, the draft picks that he would like to in what is supposed to be a very deep draft this June. And, and like I said, I, I don't think this is the year to, uh, to go for it all but they certainly won't be buyers. Um, I think more than likely they just stay pat at the deadline and, and probably don't do anything at all. Dave, obviously the goaltending situation, you mentioned Zepp uh, played okay, 21 of 23 shots on uh, Sunday against Washington. Emery's been kind of carrying the load. What is Mason's status moving forward here? Yeah, I talked to him this morning. He's not cleared yet, but he's going on the trip um, hoping to play. I, I guess Thursday would probably be more realistic. But he's close. Um, you know, Rob Zepp's done an admirable job. Ray Emery had started uh, quite a big stretch there for the Flyers um, when Mason was first hurt. But uh, yeah, I, I think they'll get Mason back sooner rather than later. Then you know, obviously that would be a big boost for them. But you got to give Emery, I guess, a little bit of credit for keeping them. You know, playing some pretty good hockey uh, in a situation where where they lost Mason, it almost seems like all right. That was a nice little couple of weeks there. Wait, but how well has Emery played to keep them around in this thing? Yeah, definitely, especially at the the beginning stretch of that. And there was a road trip there that I wasn't on, and I had been you know watching from afar, and 
you know, when you when you watch a goalie, you, you you tend to see the ease at which he makes those saves. And Mason makes it look easy a lot of times. And a lot of times, Ray Emery looks like he's fighting the puck off. And uh, sometimes, you know, you, know you, you say, well, he, he, he looks a little bit shaky. But you, when you look at his, his save percentage and it was above 900, it's like, wow, man, you know what? He, he's, he's been doing the job. So uh, for, for quite a while there, he was, he was definitely holding things down. I think his last appearance, he let up four goals, which is certainly not what, uh, what he would want. And a couple of them were, were on uh, rebounds that he would probably like to have controlled a little bit better than he did. So uh, at the end there, I don't want to say fell, fell apart because he, he did very well for them uh, at the beginning of this, this Mason injury, this most recent one. But he's, he's done the job for them, yeah. Yeah, and of course, uh, they get a pickup from Zepp yesterday. We're talking with Dave Isaac, at Dave G. Isaac on Twitter. Uh, what is uh, the status of teaming in at this point? Uh, he says he needs at least three more practices. Um, in, in hockey players, they think there's a big difference between a normal practice and a morning skate because a morning skate's like a football walkthrough. There's, there's really not um, a whole lot of... of hard contact or, or, you know, picking up the pace to, to a morning skate. So uh, he, he'd like three more skates, and that'll, that'll mean this week, uh, morning skates Tuesday and Thursday, and then Wednesday will be an, an, an actual uh, real practice, which would be his third. Um, he says that uh, Thursday is, is pretty much out of the question. He's targeting Saturday. Uh, when the Flyers come home and face the New York Rangers as a potential return date. But uh, as he said this morning, if, if, uh, if this team's playing well and playing uh, this well on the blue line against uh, big time teams, he goes, why am I going to rush? So uh, we'll, we'll see. But I think he's targeting Saturday as, as when he would like to come back. Yeah. You know, this is all really interesting. Here's a guy who's 39 years old. and weren't even sure if he was going to play at all this year to begin with. Then he gets the blood clots. And now, you know, are they anticipating if he comes back that he's going to just get himself right back on the top pairing? I mean, what are they planning on doing with him? Well, nobody's really blown the doors off here this season and been a, a, a runaway best defenseman for the Flyers. I mean, uh, I was saying that they had played better defensively. That's, that's not just the, uh, the guys that, that play on the blue line. That's, that's the forwards, too. Mm-hmm. I think everybody's doing that job. And when the Flyers have played well, that's what Craig Brewery has been trying to preach. And sometimes these, these forwards just try and, and go all for naught on, on offense and, and forget about that. As far as the defensemen go, uh, nobody's been <laughs> far and away their their best defenseman. So to say top pair, I mean, you, you could say the Flyers have <laughs> three uh, three top pairs, or you could say they have three bottom pairs, really, and, and they're kind <laughs> of almost the same thing. Uh, what I don't think will happen is is him coming back and playing, you know, twenty two, twenty three minutes a night like he used to. Um, you know, he says he's in good good conditioning shape, but uh, I just can't see the Flyers using him that much. Uh, even though he's he's kind of the the fresh legs, it would almost be like a new acquisition. Uh, you got to remember that the guy's turning forty next month. Absolutely, there's no question, you know, about it. That here's a guy who hasn't played all season long, and it's not like he's a spring chicken. You're not getting a 25 year old guy in his prime back. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what he gives this team. But obviously, if this team's going to do something in terms of getting into the playoffs, it's going to be Voracek and Claude Giroux that's going to have to lead them there. You know, what have you seen? This is a case where these guys just kind of hitting that lull. Uh, you know, they needed to just be uh, split up for a couple of games. What do you think moving forward for those two guys? Yeah, I, I can't see that experiment lasting a super long time. I understand the thought process behind it. You have two your, your two best offensive players. You want to, you know, try and split them up. I get that, but uh, there's a chemistry factor there too that just isn't. Um, it doesn't just show up automatically with with Wayne Simmons, even though the guys played with uh, 14 of 16 possible forwards. I think it, it doesn't mean that it, it's going to be you know that that same kind of connection. Uh, just throwing him back in there. So, uh, you know, there there have been times where in, the, in these past couple games, Voracek's been out there uh, on shifts with Drew. Um, I, I would expect that that would actually go back uh, and, and make it the uh, super top line or whatever you want to call it uh, p- pretty shortly here. But yeah, those two definitely have to pick it up because they're they're uh, 
their production or lack thereof was was why they got split up in the first place. Eight, one, and four uh, over the last thirteen games here for Philadelphia, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, they haven't been perfect over this run, but they've been playing pretty well, and they've got some winnable games coming in pre run. Obviously, uh, they're going to, as you mentioned before, they could win ten in a row. I think was the last time we talked, and it might not help them out, but they're still going to need a little help here uh, with Boston down the stretch. But right now, Philadelphia, Boston, who's a better team? Uh, from February to the end, who do you think's uh, who's got, who looks has the look of a better team from now to the end? Oh, the, the Flyers do. I mean, you know, the the playoffs are always about what have you done for me lately, and who's the hot team going in. I mean, the, they not that I think that this is going to happen again, but you know, they they snuck into the playoffs in 2010 and made it all the way to the finals. It's all about who's who's hot at, at the end there. Now, again, I don't think this is a, a team that's that's going to go quite that far, but. Uh, just to get there would would be pretty significant when you look at the way they started the season, when you look at uh, the fact that they had, I think, three points in the standings over a stretch of 11 games in November. I mean, you you could you were trying to write them off then or, or thinking about writing them off then. Even Ed Snyder said yesterday he thought about writing them off then. Uh, so it would be quite an accomplishment if they did make it to the playoffs, but uh, I don't know about how much noise they would they would possibly make when they get in there. Yeah, it'll give us there. it'll give us a little fun for a week to see this thing happen. I think it would be an unbelievable you know accomplishment for them to make that run and and, and really show you know what kind of character they might have inside there because as you mentioned before, I mean you know this was a team that just seemed like all right no matter what happened you know there was talk of of tanking about a month ago. Hey, just you know trying to finish out the string and get yourself a draft pick, and now all of a sudden they find themselves four points out. You happen to be in Buffalo, which is uh, the NHL <laughs> capital of tanking this season. And, and I remember Ron Hextall blowing that off, saying uh, not only is that not what he's trying to do, but it's something that shouldn't be rewarded. I think he, he said ineptness should not be rewarded. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly been an interesting streak. And like we were saying, 10 in a row, they almost did 10 in a row, whatever it is, 8-1 eight, and 3-8-1-4. and, eight, one and, three, eight, one and four. Um, I mean, they, they've, they've certainly started putting it together here, and, and it's uh, the fact that, that Drew and Voracek haven't been what they were for most of the season these last few games does tell you something about their character and their secondary scoring. They're getting it from, from defensemen, Mark Stray, Michael Delzato with the, the game winner yesterday. I mean, they're, they're just uh, they're starting to figure it out. But the question always seems to be with this team, what took them so long? Always, and of course, uh, the fun continues tomorrow night. They play every other night the rest of the week here, trying to get themselves finishing strong in the month of February. At Dave G. Isaac for more as the Flyers take on Carolina tomorrow night. Dave, thanks as always, pal. Thanks, Mike.